Let's talk about what happens in the body when you are exposed to a traumatic stressor. You probably know that your body has a built-in system for responding to danger, called the fight or flight response. So every time you face a threatening situation, your body experiences an involuntary physical reaction. Okay, let's take a closer look at what just happened. It all starts with your amygdala, the emotional center of your brain. Your amygdala is part of your brain's limbic system, which controls your basic emotions and drives, like fear, hunger, and pleasure. Your amygdala is like an alarm system for threats. It helps your brain recognize possible threats and prepares your body to defend or escape. When your amygdala perceives a threat, it activates your hippocampus. The hippocampus, which governs your learning and conscious memories, weighs the threat against what you already know to determine if the threat is real. If the threat is perceived as real, your amygdala notifies your hypothalamus to activate your body for fight or flight. Your body releases adrenaline and cortisol, your heart rate and breathing speed up, and you become hyper alert. Your body is ready to face the dangerous situation with speed, clarity, and agility. After you avert or overcome the threat, your hormones disperse and your heart rate, muscles, and other physical responses return back to normal. But when you are exposed to stressful or traumatizing situations over and over again, like viewing photos of child sexual abuse, visiting the homes of violent offenders, or an offender committing suicide after losing custody of her children, your body is forced to continually repeat this involuntary fear response. Over time, repeated exposure to stressful situations causes your amygdala or alarm system to grow denser and bigger, while your hippocampus, which determines if threats are real or not, gets smaller. Your body remains in a state of constant high alert, making your brain continuously release cortisol and adrenaline, and putting all of your physiological symptoms on overload. Eventually, this begins to wear your mind and body down. You may start to feel tired, sluggish, or unmotivated. You may have problems with sleeping or eating, or trouble with personal relationships. These are symptoms of secondary traumatic stress. However, your body has a great capacity to heal itself. You can learn relaxation techniques to help the body release the calming hormone oxytocin. Relaxation techniques also help calm down the amygdala, which lowers the amount of cortisol, adrenaline, and other stress hormones in your body. In addition to relaxation techniques, you can practice protective behaviors and techniques to develop resiliency, the ability to bounce back from trauma and stress.